Hello, my name is uh, Peter Fattinger. I'm a professor at Vienna University of Technology, where I'm running the Design Build Studio, which I founded 20 years ago. Uh, I was invited by Professor Chen to participate in the SCU conference uh, this December in uh, Taiwan. And he asked me to put together some slides for you about our Design Build Studio. Uh, yeah, as it shouldn't take much more than 20 minutes, uh, I will give you some general information on our studio first, and then show um, a small selection of three exemplary projects, uh, which have quite uh, different uh, framework conditions in each. So here we go. Yeah, within our design build projects, uh, the students are running through all stages of a small but uh, real building project. They're working in collective teamwork uh, from the first sketch till uh, fixing the last crew with all the related responsibilities and consequences. Within these projects, uh, we also try to expand the traditional role of the architect as a service provider by acting in most cases, not only as designers, but also as initiators, fundraisers, constructors, and sometimes even as operators and users of these projects in one entity. The students learn to deal with small budgets, tight deadlines, and unexpected problems. And most importantly, they are confronted with the setbacks uh, which usually come up when you are transforming plans into built reality. Not only the collaboration within the student team, but also the collaboration with the clients, the users, local authorities, consultants, professionals, material suppliers and sponsors makes an important part of the learning but doing process of these projects. The immediate goal of our design build projects is not only to build architecture, but rather to give students the possibility to evaluate the equality of their thinking against the constraints of the real world and to understand the implications of the decisions in a broader context. Here, just uh, quickly, I want to give you a brief uh, idea about how the Design Build Studio is embedded in our university. Um, at the moment, there are 3,600 students enrolled in architecture at our school. 1,400 of them are in the master studies, and every year they can choose from a variety of around 80 design studios. The studios are coping with uh, very different topics, design tasks like uh, designing skyscrapers, airports, museums, social housing, as well as urban design, landscape design, and many more. One out of these 80 design studios is the Design Build Studio. There are basically two ranges of projects we're doing within our design build studio. So one range of projects are temporary installations for urban public space in Austria. The other range of projects are permanent buildings for social institutions. So in the first couple of years, we were doing permanent projects in overseas countries like South Africa and Indonesia. But in the meantime, uh, we put our focus uh, to projects located uh, back in Austria. So for each of these uh, three different ranges, I will show you one exemplary project. So head on, near the orphanage, and there's a third project uh, above. So our first, uh, very first project, uh, we're focusing a lot on temporary interventions in public urban space. After some small interventions, which we realized in different locations in Vienna, we were invited by the Fund for Public Art of the City of Vienna to do a large scale project in the outskirts of Vienna. So we chose this urban square, the Wallensteinplatz in the 20th district of Vienna as location of the project. The basic idea was <clears throat> to add a usable vertical extension to a public space, a kind of collage of different functions of everyday life stacked above each other. The public space is stage and grandstand for real encounters. For the prefabrication of the units, we had the possibility to use a large abandoned hall at Vienna Fairgrounds. 
The individual space units for the various functions were designed and built by different teams of students. An essential aspect of design build projects is that all design and building activities are executed by the same acting persons and that there's no longer, as usual in the established architectural practice, a strict division of those who design and those who build. So you have the possibility to develop the design hand in hand with the building process while you're building. So here, one of the finished modules, um, a small cafe, to be integrated into the scaffolding system, which was set up by these uh, professional workers. So while they did their job, uh, the students were busy preparing the floor platforms. Before the modules were delivered and put into place by a crane. After the designing and building process uh, taking nearly four months, the temporary installation was ready to open in summer 2005. For six weeks, Erdogan was hosting a dance program of daily workshops, lectures, performances, and concerts. Artists and residents were invited to live and work on site in a structure which was connected to the tower by a bridge. The whole tower was uh, completely public and accessible. Anybody could step up and use it. Walking up the stairs, you could find very different scenarios like stacked landscapes. So from the info kiosk at the level of the square, to an elevated table soccer, a DJ cabin, covered with hundreds of hand-cut mirrors, some overhanging working spaces uh, equipped with internet access. But yeah, things like these, of course, just work in summer and we were really lucky to have a great summer in 2005. While some passerbys uh, just watched add on from a safe distance, others used the potential of the temporary intervention intensively. Of course, it was the kids who at first realized the possibilities offered by add on and convinced the parents to make use of the structure. But basically, all generations were interested, curious, and excited. They enjoyed to explore the extraordinary environment, to discover unexpected settings, and to interact with the installation and with the other visitors. Uh, here, for example, you can see an installation by artist in residence David Moises, who installed a car wash to, as he said, polish your skin on the way to the whirlpool. Um, the car wash was operating on and off by random, uh, what caused quite some surprise for the visitors. So some further steps up, we installed a caravan for the housekeeper. Here always two members of our team were staying during the nights to take care of it on. Projects like it on only work with the intense care of a big team, which always has to be present on site to take care of it, to maintain it, and to clean it, and what is most important, to communicate with the visitors. It's definitely not a drop sculpture, which you can just leave by itself. So also the canteen on the level of nine meters was an important communication point, and somehow the vibrant heart of it all. Every day, different teams of students, artists, and architects were invited to run the kitchen. But many people also came with their own picnic baskets, sometimes already early in the morning, to enjoy a breakfast with a view. Above, on top, we set up a roof terrace with a fake rock and a mini mountain pond. For six weeks, Add-on positioned itself at the interface between publicness and privateness. It offered insight as well as outlook. It allowed new perspectives on the familiar surrounding and questioned burned in modes of perception of public space. It was about urban appropriation, about activating public space, about improving the relationship between social and spatial matters. Temporary interventions like this have the great advantage that more experimentation is possible than in the corset of permanence. 
The limited time frame allows not only a more daring and lighter construction, but also a more intense and concentrated activity in and around the installation. While its physical presence may have disappeared at the end of the project, memories and the emotionality of the place still remain. Uh, a completely different set of framework conditions uh, came up with our projects, which we did in threshold countries overseas. In comparison to the previous FMR projects, here the goal was to design and build permanent buildings for social institutions, proper structures, which can withstand intense use in any weather condition over many years. The first of these projects we undertook in a South African township in Johannesburg, where we designed and built a center for people with disabilities in a kindergarten. Um, in 2007, we were invited by the Austrian NGO Caritas to do a project on the Indonesian island Nias, which was severely hit by the tsunami and following earthquakes two years before. So we were asked to extend uh, this existing orphanage uh, on the island Nias, the Kinder of Gide, with a multi-purpose hall. The hall should not only be used as playroom and event space for the 80 orphans, but also as a kind of community center for the whole village. So here you can see the, the site for this uh, future multifunctional hall, quite a sloping terrain, which um, had a big influence on the development of the project. So the design was undertaken in a collaborative and collective process by the students uh, during winter term in Vienna. And as you can see here, the building follows the topography of the, the site. Uh, big sitting stairs and platforms of different height should connect the upper and lower part of the building. Yeah, and as a team of 20, we finally traveled to Indonesia for the realization in February 2007 and uh, stayed for eight weeks. For the basic construction, we could use uh, local wood, which was harvested from the forest of the monastery, which was uh, running the orphanage. It was incredibly strong and heavy wood, which allowed us to reduce the dimensions of the structure to half of what we pre-calculated with uh, our structural engineers in, back in Vienna. And yeah, generally only quite a small range of materials was available in stock on this small island. Basically corrugated metal, crystal sand corrugated PVC, plywood and cement. To react to the climatic challenges, we constructed the roof and exterior walls two layered uh, extensive roofs uh, protect the entrances from rain and sun and um, the ventilation through the building was optimized uh, to a double layered lamella facade with uh, mosquito nets in between. And as the building followed the natural drop of the terrain of four meters, uh, this also had a positive effect on the air convection within the building. Yeah, a relevant aspect of uh, doing uh, the sample projects in these threshold countries is to sensibilize the students for global relations and to confront them with a very different reality of life in these regions of the world. Another positive effect of doing a project far away from home is uh, that the team is kind of free from obligations and distractions which they would have in their normal everyday life uh, back at home. So from sunrise to sunset, we could really dedicate our full time uh, to the project, six days a week and eight weeks in total. Yeah, it's incredible how much energy can be generated when a team of just 20 students is heading for a common aim, like this big building with uh, full enthusiasm. Yeah, and with the opening ceremony and the handover of the building to the users, a uh, new phase of the project begins. So now the students uh, can experience how their design proves when it's used. So here the view of the general, uh, the, the central grandstand with the uh, seating uh, steps and platforms. It follows this natural topography of the site and also functions as a great indoor playground on very different levels. 
and it connects uh, the entrance and library area on the higher level with the assembly hall and music room on the lower level. A handcraft workshop, sanitary facilities, and a small hideout for the kids are also situated on the ground floor. Yeah, and after four projects in overseas countries, uh, we put our focus back to Austria again from uh, 2008 on, where we did many different permanent projects for various NGOs. And I'll show you now one of these uh, projects we did in 2005, um, project which led us to a very idyllic place uh, in the north of Austria, in the wine district around 80 kilometers north of Vienna to the small village Unternalp. Here the NGO Caritas is uh, running a home for mentally disabled people in historically protected farm estate of a former monastery. Um, around <clears throat> 45 people with mental disabilities live and work here. Another additional 40 come here on a daily basis to work in different uh, workshops. So one big focus of the workshops uh, the handicapped are busy with is organic agriculture. So they're producing gems, honey, herbs, and also have plenty of hens, pigs and sheep and stuff like that. But there are also other fields of workshops the handicapped can choose to work in like carpenting, painting, and masonry. And yeah, all this is embedded in a great landscape and historically protected architecture, partly even dating back to the 16th century. The right wing of this courtyard, which was uh, the only building still used by the monastery in the last years, also got available for use by Caritas. Uh, they decided to open a new workshop facility here, focusing on tourism. So the idea was to open a bed and breakfast facility, which should be run by people with uh, disabilities. And uh, they decided to invite our design build studio to refurbish this facility. So this is the student team at the first site visit in October 2014. So we started the project with a one week uh, workshop on site to get the feeling for the location and also for the people who should then run the place, the people with disability. So here, one of the handicapped people guides the students through the so far quite untouched wing of the estate. And these literally have been the first steps of a great 18 month collaboration with the handicapped people at their wonderful farm estate. So this was the condition of the rooms as we found it. Uh, not yet appropriate nor up to date to host guests. So right on the side, the 20 students in teams of three to five people developed uh, first ideas and concepts, how to organize the different functions of the future bed and breakfast. And at the end of the first week, we already had a first presentation with Kaidas and the National Preservation Department, which also uh, joined this process and yeah, many working weeks, discussions and presentations later, we ended up with the final design, which uh, suggested to have all the sleeping rooms in the second floor and due to the generous room height of nearly five meters, we decided to introduce uh, freestanding sanitary units uh, with a gallery floor above, which should then work as additional sleeping or retreat space. A multifunctional community space for all guests uh, with seating stairs was also implanted in the second floor, located on the very left. Um, the ground floor was supposed to house the reception, the back office, the breakfast room, and the kitchen. So after two months of uh, designing, um, we had the plans ready for submitting for building permission. The plans were supervised by a local partner architect who also officially submitted the plans at the local authorities. We could finally start the building process in March 2015. So first we had to remove tons of uh, stuff, not only walls, but also entire floors and 
also digging down some meter of the soil. Yeah, on one side we had a great collaboration with the handicapped people of the masonry workshop. They joined us every day on the building site and really did a great job and they enjoyed to be an equivalent part of the team. And also for the students, it was a great experience to work hand in hand with people with uh, disabilities. And most of the students never before collaborated with uh, people with disabilities. And yeah, while in the beginning, some were a bit reserved, uh, soon both sides came out of their shells. Yeah, here you see a site building which uh, was in such a bad condition that uh, we had to totally break it down. And after nearly three months of deconstruction, finally the real construction process started and uh, therefore we had great support from uh, professional workers of uh, the building company which was officially supervising our works. So here on the left, um, Seth, our foreman, uh, giving instructions to the students. So briefed by the foreman um, and always under his surveillance, uh, we could do a lot on our own. Here one of the sanitary boxes gets built. And kilometers of pipes and tubes were installed underneath the floor. Also for the electrical and HVAC installations, we were working hand in hand with uh, professional companies, which not only instructed us uh, how to do it, but uh, which also in the end are liable for any defects which uh, come up later on, maybe or maybe not. Yeah, but not only the interior was uh, part of the project, uh, also the reconstruction of the, um, the site building, um, where this new storage facility replaces uh, the old building which uh, we removed. And also the landscape design for the courtyard was an issue for the students. So you, you see them doing the form work uh, for the barbecue and fireplace. And yeah, the students really enjoyed to work with concrete and well, the first concrete pieces, uh, which you see here, still were done with very rough uh, form work. Uh, the students during the project decided to advance the form work skills and to start a kind of additional project uh, within the project, uh, which gave them a possibility for material experimentation. So they decided to cast the worktops for the kitchen in high performance concrete. So here you see them uh, exactly measuring the mix for the concrete and you see they pour it into the form and uh, that's the result after stripping the form work. So these working tops uh, custom made for, for the new kitchen. And yeah, for doing all the furniture uh, and preparing the hundreds of square meters of cladding for the sanitary boxes, uh, which we made from uh, wood, we had the great opportunity to collaborate with a local carpenter. So we were assisted by a retired carpenter you see here on the right. And uh, so together with him, the students were allowed to work in the facilities of the carpenter in the neighboring village. So here they could cut and sand the birch plywood uh, and in the end also treat it with white pigmented oil. Yeah, and finally the students also developed the branding and corporate identity for the bed and breakfast. The name Oben Auf, meaning on top, not only refers to the galleries above the sanitary boxes, uh, but also relates to the geographical location of the bed and breakfast in the Vine Hills north of Vienna. So the students created very different kinds of application for the corporate identity for the souvenir shop. And even the wine bottles, a very important product of the region, were branded uh, with the Oben Auf logo. And you find the logo and uh, other signage in the same typography, uh, even on the walls in the building. Yeah, and finally, uh, one and a half year after the students walked through the building for the first time, we were done. 
Then subsequently, the handicap uh, for one entire month undertook a kind of test drive where all the students and the friends were invited uh, to be test guests. And yeah, this was an important step for the handicapped before they started the full operation of the bed and breakfast. And um, the dead drive was also an ideal learning step for the students to slip into the role of the user in the end, to see what works well and what maybe still would need some adjustments. So here just quickly some more images of the final result, the breakfast room, the kitchen with the workshops from uh, hand cast concrete, the courtyard with the fireplace. Yeah, in the meantime, the better breakfast is in full operation already for four years now. It's extremely well booked and it's uh, definitely hard to get the room unless you book long in advance. So yeah, this was a short cross section through our design build studio showing just uh, three exemplar projects, each in a very different context and setting. And yeah, if you want to see more, please visit our homepage. Yeah, thanks for watching. I'm looking forward to meet you online at the SCU uh, conference on the 23rd of December. And yeah, see you then. Bye bye.